Good evening to everyone and welcome to the SPM Revision Seminar Online. And today's subject is physics. Before I introduce the speaker, who anyone who would like to ask a question answered by the speaker, please post your questions on the chat box so we can read them out during the Q&A session. Besides that, for the full five viewers this year, we are offering School Achievers Scholarship Award SASA. We do highly encourage all from five leavers to submit your application through our webpage. For more information, please log on to our webpage to find more. Today we have Mr. Ilham, lecturer for the Faculty of University Foundation Studies as a speaker for today. Over to you, Mr. Ilham. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mohan for the introduction. All right, so uh, welcome back students to our uh, this is week six okay so uh, welcome back so we have gone through uh, five weeks and five chapters we have covered that okay so uh, now we are going to move to week six and week six will be a new chapter and this will actually we, we are going to start focusing on uh, form five chapters okay so hopefully everyone is ready with their notebooks okay uh, so today we are going to cover uh, wave. Okay, wave is uh, our topic for this week. Okay, let me share you my screen. Uh, sharing my screen. Okay, so let me open my slide show. Okay, so this is week six. Okay, uh, all right. So week six, we are going to start with wave. And as I browse through the SPM notes, okay, the SPM notes that I can find online, okay, I uh, I can see that these topics, uh, this one does not really go deep into calculation. Instead, uh, this one actually more towards the application, and also the phenomenon involving wave. Okay, so uh, uh, without further ado, let's dig into our topic for this week. Okay. So this is the things that uh, we would need to uh, study for uh, this uh, particular chapter, chapter with. Okay, so uh, you have quite a lot, a lot of things. So uh, what you need to do for this one, I suggest, okay, this is my personal suggestion. I would like you guys to actually, uh, let me get pen. Okay, so the formula for this one is quite, uh, there's actually a less formula in this chapter. Okay, so less formula. Okay, so uh, but then for this chapter, you need to understand. Okay, understand. So understanding all of these different different kind of things might requires you to uh, memorize a bit. Okay, but then uh, if you are able to like uh, create some sort of stories for this kind of phenomenon and this this kind of stuff okay uh, i am sure you are going to uh, be able to tackle this particular topics okay um, uh, so I have, still, huh? did you yes put anything on the content are you sharing your content uh yes okay uh, let me share that again yeah oh okay uh all right so right now i can see your uh, your desktop yeah, because I don't, I sh it's showing me Chow Yen's desktop. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. oh, sorry, sorry, okay. Uh, yeah. Miss Chow Yen, did you, did you? I think she accidentally. Yeah, did you accidentally open okay. something? That's better. Okay, all right. Okay, okay, so uh, sorry about that. Uh, I think one of our, one of our speakers uh, accidentally do something. <laughs> Okay, all right. So sorry about that. Uh, okay, so please tell me if I am able to share my screen now. Yeah, the screen is up. Okay, is it up now? Yeah. Okay, all right. So back to our our chapter. Okay, so sorry, sorry about that. Okay, so as I mentioned just now, uh, we have less uh, formula, but then more understanding. Okay, so uh, what we need to do for this chapter is that uh, you need to actually understand quite a lot of phenomenon. So uh, you you might need to memorize a bit. Okay, and I have gone through the past year's question. Okay, I have looked at uh, SPM past year uh, paper one, uh, paper two, 
and also paper three. Okay, so when things comes for uh, things, when, when, when this particular chapters come into the question, okay, the, uh, the most uh, common question is going to be the calculation involving this formula. V is equal to F lambda, uh, this one. And also uh, to calculate the uh, diffraction, okay, the interference pattern, that one, uh, there's another formula for that. And also, uh, I think that's pretty much the formula that you might need to uh, remember. Okay, and there's also the graph, okay, this is the uh, graph displacement time, this one. Okay, so this one we are going to talk about this uh, later. Okay, so uh, when 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 uh, these particular topics actually uh, uh, come up into your exam, okay, so make sure you you are able to actually uh, make sure you are able to actually uh, understand okay all these different different kind of phenomenon. Okay, all right. So uh, first thing that we are going to look at before we go to wave, we need to actually uh, understand oscillation. First. Okay, oscillation is uh, some sort of wave. It is the simplest kind of wave. You can have something oscillating up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And that can also be a simplest one dimensional wave. Okay. After oscillation, we are going to look at a different type of wave. We have uh, two types of wave. Okay, let me get a pen. Uh, two types of wave. The first type of wave is the transverse and also longitudinal. Okay, so uh, two types. We are going to view this later. And then a wavelength, wavelength frequency formula, this one. Okay, this is the wavelength frequency formula. When you have wavelength frequency formula, uh, this one is uh, very much the major things in this chapter. Okay, so if you can understand the relationship between this V is equal to F lambda, you can apply this to uh, different, different kind of things. Okay, you, you are... Uh, you are sure to actually be able to understand the whole concept of wave. Okay, All right. Uh, next, we have different kind of phenomenon of wave. Okay, so we have reflection, refraction, diffraction, and interference. Okay, so reflection is like when you have a source like light. Okay, you have light, uh, light going into a mirror. Let me get a pen. Okay, so let's assume that you have a light. Okay, and this is the normal line, normal. So the angle of incident will be equal to the angle of refracted. Theta R. So theta I is equal to theta R. Okay, so this is uh, very much the same as to other kind of wave. Okay, so we are going to look that light, apparently light is a wave. Okay, it's a form of wave. Okay, so we have two types of wave other than this. Okay, two types of wave that are, that is uh, that are mechanical wave and also uh, electromagnetic wave. Okay, we are going to look at that later. Okay, so uh, this is the sound wave. This is the electromagnetic wave. Sound wave is a form of mechanical wave. Mechanical wave. While electromagnetic wave, it consists of spectrum. Okay, spectrum. So uh, what I what I actually see in our uh, our uh, what what I can actually see inside here is that um, maybe later I think uh, the ministry is going to add up some things. Okay, they are going to include modern physics. So if modern physics actually uh, included, uh, then you might have uh, other than this. Uh, mechanical wave and also electromagnetic wave, we are going to also have uh, something called as matter wave. Okay, this one is quite advanced, but uh, I think they are going to include this one, uh, just the introduction part, okay, matter wave. Okay, so what is matter wave, you ask me? Okay, what is matter wave? Matter wave is uh, things like electron. Okay, uh, I, I have... Throughout my life, I have believed that electron is uh, some some of is some form of a uh, some some sort of a ball. You know, the that is a particle nature of electron. Okay, it, it acts like a ball, so it can move around like a ball. Okay, I can imagine that uh, the electron can move around an orbit, around a 
uh, around a proton a nucleus. Okay, but then apparently what we learn in quantum physics is that the electron is uh, it is not uh, it is not particle anymore. It is actually a type of wave. Okay, so this one uh, probably later, not your not your uh, not current this current uh, batch of course. But this one is actually very interesting, especially if you are keen into going for uh, modern uh, science. Okay. All right, so move to the next. OK, so oscillation. Oscillation is the easiest. OK, this is the easiest form. OK, or the easiest example. OK, so why do I say that this is the easiest example? Uh, this one does not look like wave at all. OK, so if you imagine you have this setup. OK, this is a spring and then this is uh, a load. OK, you pull this load up. OK, so you pull this load. This is the time. OK, you pull this load up. OK, and then you release this. You release it. So you pull it up until here and then you release it. It will go down and it will go back up, down, up, down, up, down, up. OK, so that is the idea for oscillation. Now, if you plot this motion on a graph, you are going to get this kind of graph. Okay, This is time. So over time, you will have the, the spring going up and then it goes back down and then it will go back up. It will go back down. OK, uh, in real life, uh, you're not you're not going to have this kind of uh, graph in real life. If you uh, I think Everyone uh, actually realized this. In real life, you are going to get this is the amplitude. Okay, the the graph should actually uh, goes to zero. Okay, so as it goes further and further, it's going to go to zero. Okay, so why does why does uh, this kind of things happen? Okay, so why does this kind of graph actually exist? Because if you think about it, as this thing goes up and then it goes down, up, down, up, down, okay, it's not going to constantly go back to its original position. Okay, no, because uh, we we actually uh, know that uh, nature does not behave that way. Okay, unless this is a perfectly uh, ideal no vacuum kind of place. If not, then the air resistance is going to cause the oscillation to be damp. Okay, so the word, the keyword over there is dampered. This is some sort of a dampered oscillation. Okay, all right, but uh, let's assume we want this kind of, we, we still want this kind of graph. So what should we, what should you do? Okay, so in case that you want this kind of graph instead of this kind of graph, this dampered uh, oscillate, oscillation kind of graph, uh, you can do uh, something. Okay, you can add an extra force. Okay, you can add a machine over here, for example. Okay, so this machine, okay, this is a machine. So this machine acts to actually give force, enabling this thing to go up and down, up and down. So this one will require usage of a uh, battery or, you know, power source power source okay all right so that's the idea if you want to have this kind of consistent wave uh, sorry consistent oscillation okay so you will need to have a machine so this is a force oscillation okay because you already implemented a machine so up and down up and down you will have a very very constant kind of oscillation unlike the this natural damp oscillation okay uh, and also one more thing that uh, i think you guys might want to check out is something called as resonance okay resonance so resonance is what happened if uh, the the this kind of uh, oscillation actually occurs at the same frequency okay so oscillation uh, oscillation or vibration vibration occurs at the same frequency to something else the same frequency. OK, so uh, this resonance, the, the reason why I bring this one up is because there is a phenomenon uh, about re uh, regarding to resonance. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, one day, okay, 
this this one is actually pretty famous. You can search for resonance and this bridge actually falling down and collapse actually uh, due to resonance. OK, so what happened is uh, let me erase so that I can just give you an idea of what actually happened. OK. All right, so OK, so what actually happened is that there is a bridge. OK, there is a bridge. Uh, I don't actually know how to draw a bridge. OK, just assume that this is the bridge. OK, this is uh, this is from an island somewhere. This is also from an island somewhere. So this is the bridge. OK, bridge. OK, so what happened on this bridge is that uh, the, the the designer for this bridge, okay, the architect, uh, the one that made and create this bridge, or uh, when he finished this bridge, okay, he actually does not uh, take into account people walking on this bridge. Okay, can you imagine that? The designer actually don't take into account people walking on the street, okay, on the on the bridge. Sorry, on the bridge. Okay, so this is the bridge. Uh, below it is a uh, water. Okay, uh, uh, water below. So what happened is that on the uh, when the day at the day when they actually open the bridge, so people come onto the bridge. Okay, they all come in, and then when they march into the bridge, okay, their frequency. Okay, we are going to talk about frequency later. Their frequency actually match to the natural frequency of this bridge. Okay, so the people's uh, walking on this bridge match the resonance of this bridge. So what happened is that that resonance actually amplify the vibration. Okay, amplify the vibration. So if original natural frequency is just like this, now once it become amplified, it becomes higher. Okay, it's become higher. And suddenly out of nowhere, the bridge starts to move okay it start to move and because of the resonance itself it starts to become bigger and bigger and once it become bigger and bigger okay uh, there is also air flow okay air flowing around this bridge so once it become uh, unstable the air flow make it much more unstable so it actually becomes uh, quite a disaster okay this is a very very disastrous bridge you can check out resonance you can actually check out the bridge itself i think the bridge is very very much uh very very much uh, related to that resonance if you put in resonance into your google you will actually get the the bridge phenomenon okay either kind of resonance that i can remember is the uh you know a singer trying to uh, match the uh, Okay, you have a singer, an opera singer trying to match to the glass. Okay, the glass. Okay, so if you actually match the glass frequency, the glass will eventually uh, break. Okay, why? The same thing happened. Okay, the same thing will actually happen. If the frequency of your sound, okay, the sound that you create, uh, match this natural frequency of this uh, glass, Okay, so the glass amplitude will become higher and higher, and due to resonance, it will actually uh, it will actually broke. Okay, it sorts of like an explosion or something. Okay, so that is uh, three things that I have talked about. Okay, first is oscillation. This is the standard one. I have also talked about just now about the dam oscillation. Okay, that is the natural one because we have resistance and then we have a uh, force uh, oscillation. Force one is when you put something like a machine so that the oscillation can be forced. And also we have talked about resonance. Okay, resonance. This resonance is very, very nice. Okay, if you just uh, want to dig into uh, things but not wanting to remember any formula, then resonance is uh, the phenomenon for you. Okay, all right. Okay, so this is the example that I mentioned to you. Okay, so uh, when you get a graph like this uh, involving uh, involving a wave wave topic, first thing that you need to do is check the graph type. Okay, I need to highlight that. Check the graph type. Okay, so why do I say check the graph type? Because you have two kind of graph actually. One is displacement time. Okay, this is the first type of graph. Second is displacement distance. 
Okay, so how come we have displacement distance? Okay, so displacement time, this one involve oscillation going up, down, up, down, up, down. Displacement distance involve the the whole uh the whole wave itself actually moving. So uh, you have two two type of graph. Okay, for the time being, we are going to just uh, focus on displacement time first. Okay, all right. So this is the question. Uh, look at this uh, graph over here. You have displacement time, and then you have this sort of a uh, hill. Okay, sort of healing uh, motion. Okay, wave motion. Okay, so figure above shows a displacement versus time graph for a vibrating object. So the object vibrate up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay, so now let's let's refresh back. Find the amplitude, find the period, and find the frequency for the vibrating system. Okay, so what is amplitude class? Okay. Just make sure you remember what is amplitude. Amplitude is the highest peak. Highest peak if it is positive. If it is negative, then it is the lowest peak. Oh, sorry, lowest, not peak. Okay, so peak should be for highest. Uh, I think lowest throw or something. Okay, so highest peak, this is the highest peak. The lowest is this one. Okay, so what is the value for this amplitude? The value for this amplitude will be 10. Okay, so we will just take the amplitude to be 10. Okay, uh, pen. 10. Uh, this is centimeter. Okay, so the amplitude is going to be 10 centimeter. Okay, so uh, the key idea for amplitude is that how big the wave is. Okay, how big the wave is. All right, so if it's 20 centimeter, then it will go much more bigger. Okay, 20 centimeter. All right. Uh, next we have is period. Okay, what is period? Okay, uh, let me get. Okay, so what is defined as period? Period is usually defined as a uh, uh, distance. Uh, the the distance between two two peak. Okay, distance between two peaks. Okay, so for example, this is peak number one. This is peak number two. Okay, so this and this is going to be the distance. Okay, the time. Okay. Or sometimes I also uh, remember distance as the time taken to complete one cycle. Okay, then that one can also be a definition for a period. Okay, so period is from one. This is the starting point. It goes up goes down it goes back to its original point which is here okay so that is one considered as one cycle so that is a period if you start from here you go down and then you go back up okay this is the original point so this is considered as one uh, one uh, oscillation so this is the period the time taken from here to here is one period Okay, so uh, sorry, this is not one period. This is uh, the period. Okay, the time is uh, from here to here. So, how do we find the time, the period? So, just look at this part. This is 0 0.1. Look at this part. This is 0 0.5. So, just take the displace, the 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 difference in the displaced, uh, the distance displacement. Sorry. 0 0.1 minus 0 0.4 cm. So it is 0 0.4 c. Oh, sorry, not cm. Okay, this is second. Sorry, this is second. Okay, okay forgive me on that. The unit. Okay, this is second. 0 0.5 second minus 0 0.1 second. So 0 0.4 second. So time the unit should be in second. Okay, standard. Uh, amplitude should be displacement. Okay, so that is for period. Okay, now we are going to look at uh, frequency. Okay. Uh, frequency, okay. Frequency. So frequency, this one is uh, quite easy because frequency is given as 1 over time. Okay, 1 over time. So 1 over time is actually... Uh, the period that we get just now is 0 0.4. So 1 divided by 0 0.4. This is going to be uh, uh, 2 point. Let me check my calculator just to confirm. 1 divided by 0 0.4. This is 
2.5. Get 2.5. So 0.5. Okay. So what's the unit for frequency? The unit I think uh, everyone have learned, uh, have heard this once in their lifetime. Hertz. Okay. This is hertz. After the uh, the great uh, physicist, uh, I don't remember his first name, but his last name is hertz. Okay. All right. Okay, so question B. What is the displacement of the object at t is equal to 0 0.3? Okay, at t is equal to 0 0.3. So where is 0 0.3? This is 0, 0 0.1, this is 0 0.2, this is 0 0.3. So what is the displacement at 0 0.3? Okay, if you look at 0 0.3, the displacement should be negative 10. Okay, so should we put negative? Yes, okay. The reason why we use displacement and not distance is because displacement have positive and negative value. Distance don't have any positive and negative value. So you can have something going up and down. We call that as a displacement. If not, then uh, this uh, this negative value does not make any sense because distance is not a vector. Okay, this, uh, you you don't have a distance of negative something. No. Okay. All right, so the answer for question B, what is the displacement? Displacement is negative 10. Make sure you put negative. Okay, so this one is negative 10 centimeter. Okay, now uh, for question C, sketch in the same axis above a graph of a wave which the frequency and amplitude are half the wave uh, in the figure below, uh, above, sorry. Okay, so you want a graph which the wave it have a frequency half, and then the amplitude is also half. So the amplitude is ten. We have it five. We need to make it as five. So instead of ten, we need to make the amplitude five over here. And because it go down, so it should be negative five, also half. Okay. Now the amplitude part is uh, I, I already marked over here. Uh, the problem now is frequency. How do we actually get the frequency? OK, so if you look at this picture, you start off at this point until here, this point until here. OK, if you start from this point, you can see that this is one cycle. This is two cycle. OK, so what is, uh, the, the frequency is uh, sorry, this is one, this is two. Okay, so instead of wanting it to become a two uh, full cycle, okay, we want to half it. Okay, we want to half it. Okay, so now instead of having it uh, two, I will have it one. So if it is one, I will try to make it like this. Going here. Like this. Going here. Okay, so this is the kind of picture that I will have. Okay, so what happened? The amplitude got uh, minimized. Okay, the amplitude got uh, reduced by half. And also, instead of having this as two oscillation, now I make it one oscillation. So the frequency become decreased by half. Okay, so that is the idea. Okay. Uh, all right, so... Uh, so why do you have this? But then this one is 2.5. This is this doesn't make any sense. Okay, 2.5 meaning that in one time, okay, one in one time you will have 2.5, uh, 2.5 cycle. Okay, something something like that. Okay, all right. So uh, don't be confused by that. Okay, just take it, just like this. You have it. This is two oscillation. You have into one oscillation. Okay, all right. Okay, so this is the type of wave that I want to talk to you about. Okay, we have uh, two different type of wave, transverse wave and also longitudinal wave. Okay, so transverse wave. Transverse wave involves uh, motion up and down. Motion up, down. But longitudinal wave, this one involves motion. Uh, to the front back, okay, uh, front, back. Okay, so how do you imagine this, okay? Imagine you have a string guitar, okay, you have a string guitar, 
Okay, anyone play string? Uh, sorry, anyone play instrument might have this. Okay, you have a guitar over here. This is the string. If you pluck it, okay, if you pluck it, the uh, the guitar string is going to go moving up and down, up and down. Okay, so this is what we call as a wave motion. Okay, so if you pluck over here, then the wave is going to propel, uh, propagate until here. Okay, it's going to propagate. Okay, uh, so this is a transverse wave going up and down, up and down. But longitudinal wave, okay, uh, this one, for example, our, our sound, okay, uh, coming out from our throat, it does not go up and down. Okay, uh, instead, what happened inside our, uh, okay, how, how we produce sound is that uh, it was based on the motion of the air. Okay, and then the motion of the air does not go up and down. It goes front and back. Okay, it goes a uh, certain type going front, certain going back, front and back. Okay, all right. So uh, I want to notify everyone on this thing. Okay, so the top over here, this is called as crest. Okay, the top is called as crest. And then the throw, this is the throw. The throw is the uh, lowest part. Okay, so the top part is crest, lowest part is called as throw. Okay, for longitudinal wave, for this one, you uh, instead of having crest and throw, you have uh, something called as compression. This part is compressed. Compress. Compression. Uh, why is my letter missing? Okay, compression. And then this part over here, this is rarefaction. Okay, so uh, this is the the kind of thing that you want to know when you are dealing with with transverse wave going up and down. So it will create crest and also throw. Uh, for longitudinal wave, it's going to be compressed and it's going to be rarefacted. Okay, rarefaction. Uh, this one, another example is a sling, slimy uh, ring. Okay, if you pull it uh, like this, also can. Like this, also can. Up and down can. Uh, going to the uh, front also can the move uh, the wave can actually move like that okay all right so when we are we are saying that the wave is moving okay the whole thing just move but it just move up and down okay but energy can be transferred via wave okay so for example if you are plucking over here you give it some sort of energy okay the energy can be transferred until here but this string does not move uh, from here to here. The string does not move. It just move up and down. But the energy got uh, transmitted. Okay, so that is the the, the idea about wave uh, transferring energy. Okay, all right. Uh, next we have the reflection of wave. Okay, this is the easy kind of wave. Okay, this is a light. Light is a form of electromagnetic wave. So when we are talking about reflection of wave, we just imagine we have a mirror and then it just, uh, the light go to the mirror and then it goes back. Okay. Uh, now things that you might need to note, this one is from a previous chapter. Uh, angle of incident will be equal to angle of reflection. Okay, so the light will always going to have this kind of uh, special properties. And uh, other than lights, you can also have this kind of properties for other type of wave as well. Okay, for example, if you have, uh, let's assume you change this, okay, instead of light box, you change this to a sound box, okay, or you, okay, and then you have this to be some sort of tube, uh, I don't know, tube. Okay, and you make a divider over here, and then you make another tube over here. Okay, another tube. So if you speak through this box, okay, uh, let me uh, do some mouse, okay, uh, mouth, okay, so this is a mouth. Okay, if you speak through this box, okay, the sound wave can be transmitted. Uh, it will be transmitted via this tube, okay, and then it will be reflected over here. So uh, this one is an experiment setup. You can try it on your own. Get two tube and then uh, you need someone who can speak, of course, someone who can speak over here and someone who can listen over here. OK, so if you have this kind of setup, uh, you can see that the sound can actually move from this part until this part, even though you put a divider over here. 
Okay, in the in the middle. Okay, it can move like this. Make sure there is some room for the reflection to happen at this particular point lah. Okay, so uh, the wave can actually reflect. Okay. All right, so uh, that is for reflection of wave. Now looking at refraction of wave. Okay, so refraction of wave. What is this? Refraction of wave happen when uh, this is a tank. Okay, the tank should have a standard ripple. Okay, this is standard ripple. But then somehow you put something over here at the below. Okay, so uh, what happened during at this uh, this part only? The wave is going to be different compared to the rest. Okay, why is that? Okay, this is because the refraction process occur. Okay, so as the wave is going to move over here, it it meets some uh, different medium, so that uh, the the wavelength is going to actually uh, change and also the speed also change over here. So let me write that down. This is normal speed. Okay, this is normal, also normal wavelength. Okay, at this particular point, this one, you are going to have change uh, speed, change uh, wavelength. Okay, we are going to have it at this particular part over here. Okay, from here to here. Okay, and then when it passes through this uh, over here, it's going to be back to normal. Okay, so the same thing can be, uh, uh, you can actually think of the same thing for light, okay, because light is always the easiest kind of uh, ray, okay. You can think if you have a light source over here, source, source of light. So it moved over here, it met this, uh, this, what you call this glass block with different density compared to the normal air. Okay, the glass block will actually deflect some of the length as uh, some of the uh, width okay deflect so this one uh, i have uh, talked about last week this one uses snell's law okay so uh, you have this some sort of deflection and once it goes back to from glass block to air it will have uh, the standard back okay it will be uh, refracted back okay so what actually happened the thing that happened is that for this kind of cases the frequency actually uh, remain the same, okay. Uh, I might want to put it down. Frequency remains the same. Frequency constant, okay. Just that uh, over here, uh, because frequency constant, and then we know that v is equal to f lambda, because we want this lambda, uh, sorry, not lambda, because we want the f, the frequency to be constant. Okay, because we want the frequency to be constant, you can see over here, you want the frequency to be constant on all medium, constant in all medium. So because we want frequency to be constant in all medium, we need to change the velocity, we need to change the uh, lambda, okay, the wavelength. Okay, all right, so sir, how do you know that the, the, the frequency is constant? Okay, so the reason why we know the frequency is constant is because light have fixed color. Okay, so if this is color red, it will have frequency of a uh, very, very uh, fixed uh, value. I think it's around 512 nanometer or something. Okay, so this is the frequency. Okay, the frequency will be fixed. Okay, so if the frequency change, the color will actually change. Okay, but that does not happen. If this is a red light, it pass through this glass block and it goes back, it will always be red light. So that's how we know that the frequency is constant. Now, based on the fact that frequency is constant, it means that in this glass block, the velocity of light uh, need to change. And also the, the wavelength also need to change. So if that's the case, okay, this is the equation that we get. If you like to play with mathematics, you can try and play with this one. Okay, uh, We know by now that light do travel at different speed when it enters glass block or any other heavy, heavy dense medium. Okay, all right, so that's the idea for refraction. 
Okay, now going for diffraction. Okay, this one is also interesting because diffraction occurs when you have a wave. Okay, this is this is a symbol of a wave, and eh? not Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is a wave, but this is not symbol of Wi-Fi. Okay, so what happens is that you have a wave over here, and as this wave passes through this particular hole, okay, we call this as slit. Okay, so the wave is going to be spread out. Okay, it will be spread out like this one. Okay, it is not it is not rectangular anymore. Okay, this is like straight. Now it become uh, much more dispersed. Okay, uh, and then this one can also happen if you have a flat wave, and then it encounters an object, it will make this kind of resistance towards the wave. Okay, all right. <coughs> So uh, the, for, for the, this part, okay, over here, the diffracted wave will have no changes in wavelength. It will not change in frequency. It will not change in speed. However, the amplitude will decrease. Okay, so why is it decrease? Because if you, if you think that you, you are giving quite a lot of energy over here, as it passed through the slit, okay, some of the energy got reduced by the uh, wall, okay, the slit wall. Okay, so uh, that is why the amplitude, meaning the height, okay, just in case you don't remember, okay, the amplitude is the the height over here, the this one, okay, the amplitude. Okay, this is the amplitude. So the amplitude got decreased, so it become decreased, but everything else keeps the same. Okay, right. So uh, things that that going to affect the spreading of the wave. So the things that are going to affect is the original wavelength. So the more uh, the more tighter the wavelength, the more spread is going to be, and also the slit opening size. So if the slit is being uh, uh, is being very very close, okay. So the spreading is going to be much more uh, dispersed. Okay, dispersed. I think it's dispersed. Okay, uh, if it becomes much more, uh, you, you are making more room, then the dispersion is not going to be that big. Okay, so uh, in, in other words, so if this is very, very small, it will become very, very big. But if the slit is, uh, it got quite a, a big hole, then it's not going to be that big. It's going to be like, not really that big. Okay, so the small one is going to create much more uh, spread out with uh, yeah i think that's the correct term spread spread out with okay all right and then we have interference okay interference we have a uh, principle of superposition this one should be uh, everyone okay everyone i think everyone should uh, master this one because superposition actually talks about when you have two same crest or two same throw okay so if they combine if they meet they will actually combine okay and then what happened they will just pass through each other okay and the same happen okay uh, if you have a crest one throw if they meet they will actually uh, be uh, destroyed before they actually move back okay so this one is called as okay just want to make sure you know the name this one is called as constructive interference. This one is called as destructive interference. Okay, so uh, the idea is that when two, two throw or two crest meet they was they are going to uh, construct each other making them uh, much more bigger okay making them very very big okay but if uh, one uh, met the inverted one so it is going to be destroyed okay destructive interference okay so this is the phenomenon involving interference okay you have two wave source uh, two wave source one wave source is going to spread like this the other wave source is going to have to spread like this. Okay. And then over here, you have uh, this point. This is the point, this black point over here. This is a point where throw from the first uh, wave made throw from the second wave. This 
red black point okay and then this yellow this one is where you have uh, the this uh, red one is called as a uh, node okay the black this black dot is called as anti node okay so they are going to uh, construct and if you put a screen you are going to get some sort of pattern okay you're going to get some sort of pattern okay so what kind of pattern would you get okay so uh, oh, sorry uh, pen, okay so what kind of pattern would you get okay in the middle you get a uh, constructive and then destructive uh, interference will happen so this will be black and then again constructive and then okay you are going to have some sort of uh, some sort of black uh, bright okay okay this is dark this one is bright okay so you are going to have that kind of things uh, between the between this if you put a screen over here this one is going to be bright this one is going to be dark this one is going to be bright dark bright dark okay all right so that's the idea for interference okay so now going back to our slide okay we have in particular this equation okay i don't know why this one actually plays over here where you have lambda is equal to ax divided by d okay so lambda is the wavelength okay the wavelength for the for that wave okay so lambda is usually going to be given okay so a is the distance between the two source this is the a okay and then x is the distance between two antinodal lines so between this is antinodal this is antinodal okay so you can have the distance from here to here this is the x and then d is the distance from the source to the screen so for this case most of the time it's going to ask you uh, one of the following okay it, it might ask you what is the what is the source between these two uh, two what is the distance between the two source okay it can ask you what is the distance between two source given the rest of the variables or what is the distance from the source to the screen based on the other given variable so you might want to check this uh, equation and check for any other uh, sample question okay uh, last okay sorry not last uh, this is sound wave okay sound wave uh, i don't really need to talk much about sound wave because uh, sound wave it is essentially what we hear every day okay so the key point that i want to i want everyone to know okay this is the key point is that the sound wave when we are talking about sound the sound will become loud if the amplitude is high amplitude high okay so the the sound will become loud if the amplitude is high if the amplitude is low okay like this one amplitude is low the sound will become low okay so uh, if someone asks you to like uh, can you speak louder means that you need to increase your amplitude in increase the uh, increase the amplitude from your vocal cord, uh, vocal, okay, voice box, or okay, something like that. Okay. Now, uh, other than loudness, you might also recognize that some people have a uh, deep voice, okay, deep voice, something like this one, okay, deep voice, okay, or you can also have something uh, like a high pitch, okay, something like uh, talking very, very, uh, you know. Okay, so uh, I think Mr. Bean is one of the people who like to play with this one, with the pitch, you know. Uh, sometimes he go very, very loud, okay, very, very slow. Okay, sometimes he go very, very excited. Okay, so the pitch become increased. Okay, so this is the two things that might affect a sound wave. Okay, so if someone asks you to go louder, remember to increase the amplitude of the sound wave. If someone says uh, he wants you to talk in, uh, he, if your 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 voice is actually hurting people, that means that the pitch of your voice is too high. Okay. All right. Uh, next, we have this uh, electromagnetic wave. Okay. So electromagnetic wave. Uh, this one is the spectrum of electromagnetic 
with. So this spectrum, you start with this one, this part over here. You have radio wave and then uh, long radio wave actually. And then you have radio wave. You have microwave. This one is used in your kitchen usually. Uh, IR is infrared. Okay, this is a technology that uh, 19, 90 people use Okay, when they want to transfer data. And then over here you have the visible spectrum. This, all of this color, they are called as electromagnetic wave. Okay, so this visible spectrum, this is the only thing that our eye can see, but some other animals, they can see outside of visible spectrum. For example, bees, they can see ultraviolet lights. Okay, so uh, only for us human, we can only see visible spectrum. Okay, so UV comes from uh, the sun. Okay, and also uh, you can also try to create UV. Uh, X-rays, this one is used mainly in medical. Okay, uh, everyone should have once get X-rays in their life. Okay, checking the bone. Uh, and then you have gamma ray. This one is the highest, highest energy. Okay, so if we are talking in terms of energy, gamma ray have highest energy. Okay, uh, long radio wave, this one have lowest energy. Okay, and then uh, for this highest energy, uh, what's the difference between uh, all these things? Okay, the main difference between all these things is their frequency. Okay, frequency and wavelength. So as it goes down from right to left, okay, the frequency become much more tighter. Okay, so uh, over here, uh, the the what you call this part over here the radio wave sorry the radio wave frequency is very much like this one sorry okay very much like this one it's not really that that good okay it's not really that wave but when you go for this gamma ray the frequency become very very tightly packed okay very very tightly packed so usually we'll draw like this okay this is one wave but because gamma ray is very very packed okay within this same length you are going to have very very much of a very very different different kind of frequency and this one the one that i draw this one is uh, just not as much as the gamma ray okay gamma ray is very very packed with energy okay uh, okay so this is the source radio wave the source is uh, oscillating circuit uh, AC circuit usually, uh, alternating circuit. A uh, microwave is from a microwave transmitter. Uh, infrared, any hot bodies will usually transmit infrared. A uh, visible light uh, is uh, being transmitted by the sun and also hot objects. So if you hit an object hot enough, it will actually glow. Okay, like uh, light bulbs, for example. And then you have UV, X-ray, and gamma ray. So X-ray is, uh, sorry, UV is by the sun. Uh, X-ray is by X-ray tube. Okay, you have a special tube to create X-ray. Okay, uh, it's, uh, I, I don't remember the name already. Okay, Bermstahlung something. Okay, it's very Germany. Okay, German language. Okay, uh, and next we have gamma ray. This is created by a radioactive substances. Okay, so gamma ray, uh, this one is very, very, okay, I, I might want to mention this one just in case you want you want to become a doctor. Starting from ultraviolet up, okay, this thing, this have become ionizing radiation. Okay, ionizing radiation. Okay, what do we mean by ionizing radiation, sir? Okay, starting from ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma ray, if they got a... Uh, if they got, uh, if you allow this ray to actually touch your skin or your body, it can affect the living cell. Okay, so this kind of ray can cause you to have increase in uh, probability to get cancer, cancer cell. Okay, because why? Because they can ionize the the radiation itself is ionizing radiation meaning if the this kind of ray get in touch with the cell it is going to ionize the cell and then it can cause uh, the you know the cancer process to actually happen 
Okay, so next, this is the uh, idea for this whole topic. Okay, I try to make it as compact as possible. Uh, this is not mine. Okay, so this is uh, the properties of online tuition. Okay, so uh, uh, this is based on their slides. Okay, all right, so this is a question. Uh, write down this question and I want you to try and think of the answer. So we are going to take a couple of minute break. Okay, I'm going to get some drink first. Uh, we have a sponsor uh, sponsor time with our sponsor, our official sponsor, Help University. Uh, so uh, uh, please take note of this question, try to answer it. Okay, and after the sponsor, yeah, after this commercial, then I will reveal you the answer. Okay, all right. So the question is, this is taken from physics paper 2, 2015. The actual question. Explain why most, most beach resorts are built at the bay area compared to the headland. So if you, if you remember most of the beach resorts, they are built at bay area compared to the headland. Terangkan mengapa kebanyakan pusat peranginan tepi pantai dibina di kawasan teluk berbanding Tanjung. So try and think up. Uh, think of the answer. Okay, so uh, I I will give Mr. Uh, Mr. Mohan uh, time for commercial first. Okay, I will grab uh, drinks. Okay, so uh, Mr. Mohan, back to you. Okay, thank you. Ah, have you ever thought of leaving Malaysia to explore the world? We're looking for explorers just like you. Beyond Malaysia, there are many things we can explore, experience and taste. And we want to help you do just that. Hi, I'm James, studying biology in the Imperial College London. I'm studying economics at the University of Wallace. I'm currently studying in the University of Western Australia with a Bachelor of Arts majoring in psychology. My name is John and post A levels at Health Institute. I went to Melbourne Uni and became a dentist. I went on to qualify as a chartered accountant in the Institute of Chartered Accountants in England and Wales. I now work in renewable energy. I'm doing my undergrad course in natural sciences at the University of Cambridge. I went on to study medicine at the University of Aberdeen and I'm now doing my final year of GP training. One of the avenues is through education. Not only will you be able to have access to top universities around the world, but we will help you to achieve your dreams for much less. Why spend more? We can get up to a full scholarship in our A-Levels program. All we need is your midterms or trial SPM or O-Levels to secure a place with at least 1A and above. Hey, that's pretty easy to get the scholarship. Oh dear, look at the time. Click on the link above to apply as you have limited spaces and I will see you at Help Academy. And nobody deserves it more than you. Over to you, Mr. Ilham. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mohan. <coughs> okay, thank you. All right, so uh, let's discuss the question that I give to you uh, before we uh, go into break just now. Uh, let me share you the screen. Then this one is... Okay, so the question is over here okay explain why most beach resorts are built at the bay area so bay area is something like this okay, so let me get mr mohan first all right sorry about that uh okay so where are we just now okay so uh let's look at the answer okay so hopefully you guys uh can answer this question explain why most beach resorts are built at the bay area so just in case you don't know what a bay area is okay let me draw it for you uh bay area is something like this 
Okay, so this is usually called as Cape. Okay, uh, sorry. This is uh, some sort of the ocean. Okay, this is the ocean. This is the ocean part. And then this is the land. Okay, land. This part is ocean. Now, the Cape is this part. And then the bay is this part, bay. Okay, so what happened is that most of the resort is going to be built over here at this point at bay. Uh, I don't think uh, I have seen many places that uh, created a hotel at Kip. Okay, I, I don't know like, if if there is if there are people actually building at Kip, maybe the view or something, maybe it's high ground or something. But most of the resort is going to be built at B. Why is that? Okay, that's the question. Why? So the answer is this one. Okay, so the answer is that this is due to refraction. Okay, so you can imagine as you have a wave, ocean wave, in straight line, as it passes through the, as it goes to the land, okay, so it's going to be, uh, it is going to meet the cape first. Okay, it's going to meet the cape first. And again, because of refraction, okay, so the amplitude of the ocean wave is going to be biggest at the cape and then lowest at the B, okay, the amplitude. So if anything happen, okay, uh, let's say a tsunami happen or anything, the cape will uh, receive the highest uh, amplitude of wave. Okay, so at the bay, yes, uh, you you are going to get a less, uh, you you are going to get less amplitude, so less energy of wave, and also because the distance from bay to the uh, to the source of the wave is quite uh, more. Okay, because the distance is uh higher that it's much more distance compared to the cape so that is another reason why people usually build resort at b compared to cape okay so this is the answer the from the scheme okay the effect of refraction causes seaside near to a cape is stony while near to the bay is sandy so at the cape part uh, due to the effect of refraction okay cape part is going to have a much more stony uh, structure while at the bay, it's going to have much more sandy, sandier. Okay, and then at the middle of the sea, the wave front is a linear. So this one is the linear wave front. Okay, and then uh, when water moves close to the coastline, as I mentioned, the wave front starts to curve. Okay, the wave starts to curve in. Okay, and it will follow the topography of the coastline. So it depends on the shape of the coastline. Okay, topography is basically just shape. Uh, and then at the bay, energy of uh, energy of the wave have spread to a wider area. See, so energy of the wave and cause the amplitude to be reduced. Okay, so at the bay, the amplitude reduced. At the cape, energy of the wave is converged to a small area. Amplitude is the uh, so because at this particular point, all of the wave is going to just meet at this particular point. So the amplitude is very very high. Okay, so that is the answer for this uh, that question that particular question okay so two marks uh, just to answer okay all right uh, okay uh, before we go for uh, any open question i want to give shout shout out to this two websites that i use to actually prepare my notes online tuition.com.my and also mudahnya physics this is a youtube channel and this one is an actual uh, notes okay so do visit these two uh, these two uh, in uh, these two website okay so that you can actually study physics okay i use this notes i think that their notes is very good and also mudahnya physics this one is for uh, those who want to do question Okay, question regarding to KBSM, KBSM uh, exam. Okay, uh, let's go view the question before we end. Okay, so, okay, let me stop sharing. Okay, so open question. So if a lot of people with perfect pitch manage to sing the same note with same frequency, the sound will be deafening. For resonance. Okay, so for resonance to to make a deafening sound, your voice need to resonate to our eardrum. Okay, so uh, I don't know. I don't know in prior in 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 particular what's the what's the frequency. But if you can get the same frequency as eardrum, then that will be uh, very very much deadly. Okay. All right. So this is the first question. 
The second question, is it possible to change the color of light and thus change the frequency of the light? So uh, you can actually change the color of light, but that will actually based on your motion. Okay, so imagine this is you, this is me, I am talking. So the, 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 the wave is going to uh, up, uh, is going to go out. Okay, but if I am moving and then the, the wave is moving forward and then I am moving. So uh, it's going to actually cause some sort of, uh, you know, phenomenon. Uh, there is, uh, I don't actually remember the name, the red shift and also blue shift. Okay, try and search for that. Uh, that is how an original color can be shifted towards ref red shifted or blue shifted. Okay, so this is uh, analogous to a sonic boom. Sonic boom is for sonic boom is for sound. For light, we have red shift and also blue shift. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, this one is personal. Okay. So the, because the air is quite strong. Okay. All right. So uh, that's the open question. Okay. I will answer any private question. Uh, that we have. Okay. Other than that, I think uh, no more question. Okay. So I will answer the private question one. Uh, other than that, I think that's that's it from me for this week. Yeah. Okay. So that's from that's from me for this week. Okay. Thank you for trying. Okay. Thank you for staying with us. Okay. Uh, for tomorrow you have a class English class. So don't forget for that. Okay. Mr. Mohan, back to you. Uh, okay. So thank you, Mr. Ilham. Um, hopefully we all have definitely learned a lot and have a clear thought over this session. And as what Mr. Ilham said, tomorrow will be English at 8 p.m. also. So thank you everyone and good night. Thank you.